I'm Jessica Steele and welcome to this tutorial on how to add your custom quilt label to your fastball quilt using a hidden slip stitch. This custom quilt label template is included in the PDF download of the fastball quilt pattern available on my website jessicasteeldesign.com. So if you haven't already, go ahead and download the pattern and customize your template using the tutorial included in the pattern and print out your label and we'll get started. Okay, so once you have your label printed, I am using the EQ printables by Electric Quilt Company for mine. They're the Sobel inkjet fabric sheets. Um, and I just use these. So part of the uh, process for making these labels is to soak the fabric sheet in room temperature water for 10 minutes. So you can see here I've done that and it's a little wrinkled. So what I like to do is just give it a little press. Just to get it a little bit uh, smoother. And so once it's pressed and ready to go, I've loosely cut it um, just to make it easier to handle and to do the soaking part of the process. But what you'll want to do after it's pressed is you want to trim your label and I'm just using a five and a half inch square ruler um, you can use whatever ruler you have um, so we'll do a quarter inch from each side and I just line my quarter up quarter inch up with the edge of the black line here and just give it a trim like that and then we'll do this edge and this one okay and then the bottom point so this point of your label will line up with the corner of your quilt the back of your quilt so as you can see this edge this pointed edge is not 100% 90 degrees so all you'll want to do is if you have a, a ruler that has the quarter inch um, markings on two sides you'll just take that and you'll line up the point where it's a quarter inch from each side of the point and then you'll just make sure the ruler is just lined up pretty equidistant between the edges here. It doesn't need to be perfect. You'll still cover this with your binding, but it'll just kind of help th keep things a little bit more square. So once you get that lined up, I'll trim this edge and that edge. And now we are ready to fold back our edges up here. And so now that we've got it trimmed, what we'll want to do is we'll want to fold back the side edges first and I like to fold back including the black line. You can keep the black line as part of your edge showing up front but um, for this purpose I'm going to uh, fold the black line onto the back and it kind of helps give you a guide as to where to fold. So we'll start with this edge and we'll press that down. <clears throat> and then we'll do the other edge. Just give those both of those edges a good press. And then now we are going to do the top edge. that a good press just kind of let it sit there for a while and give it a good press okay so now that we've got it pressed I like to just <clears throat> on these corners up here you can kind of see how when you lay it down you might see that little corner peek out where it's folded over if it's not 100 if it's not perfect so I like to just give that little corner 
can you see that? Just a little trim, just to keep that corner from poking out when you're attaching your label. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that off there. So your label is prepped and ready to go. And when you put it on your quilt, this these two edges will be covered by your binding. So it will be a nice finished edge around the entire label. So next we will grab our quilt and attach it to the backing. Okay, so now that we've got our label trimmed and pressed and ready to go, we're going to grab our quilt and we're gonna pick a corner of the quilt to add our label. And this is the back, the backing of your quilt here. So you're just gonna line up your corner here, of the home plate with the corner of your quilt and just see how those edges line up pretty well. And what you wanna do is secure your edges. So I like to secure the bottom two edges and then also the corners before I get started hand stitching and doing the slip stitch. So this just kind of helps keep the label in place while you are working on your slip stitch. I at least like to do the bottom two and one corner. Um, pretty soon you'll get to this corner pretty quickly so you don't necessarily have to tack that one down but for today I will go ahead and tack all four corners. We'll tack those down and just kind of pin them in place like so. So for bindings and labels, I really like to use this YLI hand quilting thread. I saw this on a Tula Pink, I think it was a binding tutorial, um, and thought I'd give it a try, but I do really like it. It is, you can tell it's um, a bit stiffer and stronger than, you know, your typical 50 weight cotton thread. Um, there aren't a ton of colors out there, so if I can use it based on the color, um, I like to match as best I can. If I don't match, it's not the end of the world for me, but um, in this case, we are putting the label on and it does match there. Um, but I do prefer to use this for binding and putting my labels on if whenever I can. So we're gonna use that thread today. And then for my needles, I use these binding needles. They are by Lori Holt of Bee in My Bonnet. Um, and I was gifted these, but I have been really enjoying them. So I'm using these today. Um, and so what you wanna do is get your length of thread, um, you know, generally, enough thread to make it all the way around your label. I have probably maybe 30 inches or so. Um, and you'll want to tie a knot in one end, if you can see that. But let me just show you how easy it is. It's a fairly small eye of the needle and this thread just slips right in there. So that is one reason why I really like it. I also feel like it's a pretty strong thread. Um, so once your needle is threaded, you've got your knot in one end. I am right-handed and I prefer to hand sew right to left. And so I'm going to start on the bottom right corner of the label and I like to turn my label this way and work, work that way. Um, so this is not crucial because when you're finished, you'll add your binding on these edges. So this whole part you won't see but for the sake of burying the knot in the, the quilt sandwich, we'll start on the raw edge of your quilt. So we'll put the needle through the, the middle of the quilt sandwich and just have it come out the very edge of your label here. And you'll just pull that up and kind of get that in place. This will be secured, again, this will be secured down by your binding later. So um, this is just to get us going on the slip stitch. So next, you'll do your first stitch here, 
And so you'll what you'll want to do for a hidden slip stitch is you will want to go back into the backing fabric and just grab a little bit of the fabric and you'll want to come back up on the very edge of the quilt label like so. So you'll go through the backing fabric, don't go all the way through to the front, your top, um, your quilt top. Um, and you'll come back through the edge of your label, try to get as close to the edge as you can. And you'll pull it through and you can see how that stitch basically disappeared there. So we'll do it again. We'll go right back to the same spot where we came out to the edge of our label, put our needle in the backing fabric only. And I like to stay with my stitches at within a quarter inch apart. Um, and you'll come back out the very edge of the label like so. And you wanna just keep your label kind of smooth and flat as you go. So we'll keep going again through the same point that you came out the edge, go through the backing fabric only and come out on the ed very edge of your label. And we'll keep going and you can see how that just gives it a nice finished look there and you can see this the stitches ever so slightly if you're really looking at them if I can bring it in you can kind of see them on the edge there but when you're looking from afar or from a, a base a general distance it, they're very hard to see so it just kind of keeps them hidden there gives it a very finished and clean look And we're getting close to our first corner here. As we get closer to the corner here, you're gonna kind of gauge where your stitch length is here and see if you can end up at the very corner here. Um, and for this one, I'm gonna give it one more stitch in between here, just cause we're getting close to a corner and I wanna make sure this corner is secure. So I'm gonna give it a little, maybe an eighth of an inch stitch there. And then on this last stitch, when I get to the corner, I'm gonna go do the same thing I've been doing and just come out the very corner here. And then I'm going to flip the label around. So I'm now I'm going to be working across the top, but I'm going to give it another little stitch here on the corner just to, if you can see that, I'm just gonna go right back through the corner again, just to tack it down a little bit and give it a little strength there. And then I'm gonna start where my thread's coming out the very corner. I'm gonna start in the backing fabric in my corner and I'm gonna do another short, shorter stitch here just to, again, to keep that corner from wanting to pop up. So we'll do a shorter stitch there. And then we'll continue and you can see how that corner is pretty well tacked down now. 
and we'll continue across the top. Okay, and we're coming to another corner here. So I'm gonna take this pin out and kind of size up my runway here to get to the corner. And I am not a thimble gal, as you can tell. I have <laughs> pretty rough and tumble hands, but um, if I'm doing a longer binding project, I may use a thimble or a needle puller, but I just kind of get by with my rough looking hands. That's okay. Okay, as we're getting to the corner here, I'm gonna come out and leave kind of a smaller gap here with my corner to kind of anchor that down. So I'm gonna have a maybe an eighth of an inch um, stitch here as my last one on this side. So through the backing again, out the very corner of the label. So we'll do that. And then we'll go back in, in the backing right at the corner and go straight through the corner again. And then we'll turn and we'll go start at the very corner in the backing fabric and come another probably eighth of an inch stitch on that first stitch there to just make sure our corner is stable. And we'll continue on to the end. As we get to the end, it's not crucial to tie your knot um, off, tie your thread off in the quilt sandwich. You can always just come out the top at the end here and tie a knot to secure it because again, your binding will be coming over this line here to hide that. But if you prefer to make sure that it's hidden anyway, as you get to the end, you'll just come through on this last stitch. I'm gonna come up through the edge. So our entire label is stitched down and then I'm just gonna go back through the backing here through the middle of the quilt sandwich and I'm going to tie my knot. And there you have it. You have your label ready to go. And at this point you can take your pins out, but your next step would be, you will add, here's your binding. Now this this space here and the allowance here is made for, this is a two and a half inch wide binding. I generally stitch my binding onto the front of my quilt first, and then I will bring it back and hand slip stitch it on the back. But this is a two and a half inch binding. So you'll see if, I'll just pin it in place. So once your binding is in place on the front, you'll, it'll be sewn there you'll flip it around to the back here and with a two and a half inch binding, you should have plenty of space to cover that line there. Um, it may be cutting it close with a two and a quarter, definitely two inch if you use that, but um, you may be cutting it close with two and a quarter. I haven't tried two and a quarter, but um, just know that this allowance here is for a two and a half inch binding. So once it's stitched to the front, you'll come back and you'll put your binding on and you'll slip stitch this, or you can machine stitch it on however you prefer, but that's your finished look. 
Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I can't wait to see your fastball quilts and your custom quilt labels. Please leave any comments below and have a good one. Thank you.